with the recent release of Unreal Engine 4.20, we have a large amount of release notes to go through. Well, we're going to go ahead and make that a little easier on you. These are our too long, didn't read highlights for Unreal Engine 4.20. One of the bigger new features is the Niagara system is now in early release. This is a replacement for the Cascade particle system. It's got a new updated UI using a stacking module system, along with new modules, so new items and new things we can do with our particles. We can now create custom modules easily. We have GPU and CPU simulation on most platforms, and then we have a sample Houdini importer for people to pick apart. We have a new cinematic DOF, or depth of field system. It's a replacement for the older circle depth of field system. It's faster, it has alpha support, it has stability for dynamic resolutions, as well as console scalability. We have a new digital human example. It uses a new specular model. It's got better backscatter for light transmission, contact shadowing, short distance dynamic global illumination, as well as a separate normal map for the iris. We have rectangular area lights. These are basically point lights with a width and a height that is adjustable. It's usable for more accurately emulating items that aren't just a single point, such as an overhead light in an office or a television. We have many mobile optimizations, 100 plus or more. And included in that, we get things such as platform material stats, so you can see the stats for your shaders on different platforms easily, improved Android debugging, mobile landscape improvements, some audio quality settings, we lowered some memory costs, some memory size based settings options, as well as lowered the material parameter collection costs when you are changing them. The proxy LOD improvement system has been removed from experimental and is now part of the engine. In addition to that, they improved the normal controls for edges and improved gap fillings. So when you had holes in some of your meshes, they didn't really look right and now they look like they're more filled in. Mixed reality capture support. It's an early access plugin. It allows you to composite players in virtual play spaces. It's comprised of three components, the video input, the calibration settings, and the in-game compositing. End display is now supported. This is a feature that allows you to create video walls for large installations. You can automatically launch and manage multiple Unreal Engine 4 instances across any number of host machines, as well as projectors using stereoscopic support for 3D, and it keeps everything in sync. The sound engine has had a few improvements. You can now record engine output to wave or sound wave assets. The Steam Audio plugin supports AMD True Audio Next and there is now hardware encoding support for the Switch. You now have a new shared skeletal mesh LOD asset. Basically, this is an asset you can create that has your LOD settings for skeletal meshes, and it allows you to reuse that amongst any skeletal meshes. You can also assign and regenerate those skeletal mesh LODs using Blutilities, which are automated or manually ran blueprints. The animation retarget manager has been improved. As you can see here, you can now save and reuse mapping data across multiple skeletal rigs. Rigid body anim node improvements. Basically, you can see the head of this weapon here. It's a little dinosaur that flops back and forth. You now can apply values from world space to local space for greater stability. And simulations can be based on any joint now, allowing you to easily reset dynamics as needed. Clothing improvements. You can now copy skeletal mesh vertex colors to the clothing parameters mask to allow your clothing to more properly fit. And in addition to that, there's now tapered capsules for physics assets that can be supported. The UMG safe zone has seen some improvements. It's now linked to the device profile and it scales based on the device screen size selected. In the bottom left of this picture, you can see it now shows the device we have selected for a preview, the screen size, and our scaling factor. In addition to that, the safe zone previewing will now be automatically enabled when you're testing screen sizes less than one. Non-uniform safe zones are also supported for items such as the iPhone X and its notch. Curve atlases and materials. Previously, we had linear curves. Now you can support curve atlases. It's an asset that stores multiple linear curves 
and you can access it inside of the items that usually use linear curves inside your materials as well as it has support for blueprints blueprints now have a watch window you can watch variables across multiple blueprints you can easily jump between blueprints you can go in and out of different variable types. You can break apart things such as vectors, structs, and objects. You can watch the execution flow in real time and as support for the call stack. We have an improved mobile specular model. It now uses the GGX lighting model by default. It gives you a higher quality with a small cost to the shader processing time. And it allows it to more accurately match the shader model 5 model. Older version is still available. It's in the mobile options under Use Legacy Lighting Model. AR support has been updated. Apple AR Kit now has things such as vertical plane detection, face tracking, 2D and 3D object and image detection for creating better persistent and shared AR experiences. AR Core has been updated to 1.2. It gives you vertical plane detection, augmented images, and cloud anchors. In addition to those major features, there are hundreds of other minor changes and features, and we'll just note a few of them here. Garbage collection has been improved by as much as 13 times. Visual Studio 2017 is now the default supported Visual Studio version. Development streams are now available on GitHub, so you can access things such as the dev rendering branch directly on GitHub. Many optimizations for the Switch platform. You can now extend the actor and the content menus right-click menu using scripted and blue utilities. The geometry cache and Alembic importer have been updated. You can now label your saved colors in the color picker. There's a new format for meshes that Unreal Engine is starting to introduce called the mesh description format. It basically allows better support in the future for more changes to the mesh itself and to better modularize the way it works. Recently opened items can be filtered out inside your content browser. Shotgun now has integration inside of the editor. It's an early access support. There are better editor scripting and automation, automation, yeah, automation libraries directly inside of the engine. You can now import asset metadata directly into the engine through FBXs. There's now improved script access for stack meshes for importing LODs and collisions as well as modifying them inside of the engine through both Python and Blueprints. You can now book print Blueprints so you can easily jump back and forth between different parts of your Blueprints. There's even more. We have some mobile skylight reflections improved. There's new replication driver graph system in place it's for more advanced uses for larger amounts of data that you can control on your network system steam authentication is now supported there are now frame accuracy improvements for the sequencer system it uses integers now so you can have individual frame accuracy rather than using floats which may bounce back and forth not exactly accurate sequencer has many improvements such we such as there's now a media track supported directly inside of sequencer final cut pro 7 xml can be imported and exported now directly from the editor translucency support for isr and then magic leap one early access support in addition to all of that you have the normal platform sdk upgrades to bring everything up to date and par with the newer versions for Windows, Android, OS X, iOS, Visual Studio, HTML, and all the other console platforms you can see here. If you want more information, feel free to read the full release notes for 4.20 at unrealengine.com slash release dash notes. And look for the other videos that show more in-depth information regarding some of these highlighted features.